Congratulations on having the finest rotisserie ever made. The platinum digital full-size model, the black jog dial timer model, the popular full-size model from Ron's TV show, and the newer Showtime rotisseries, the smaller ones, the Compact Plus, and the Little Showtime, and the Junior Showtime. Good Housekeeping Magazine tested Showtime and reported, the product is well designed and easy to use, and they gave it nine stars out of 10. The cooking times given in this video are approximate cooking times. Rotisserie cooking times will vary due to differences in electrical output, in shape, size, and the amount of fat and bone on the meat or poultry. Always use a meat or poultry thermometer inserted in the thickest portion of the food to determine if it's done. Introducing my newest Showtime rotisserie and barbecue. It's called the Pro for Professional because it does so much food. I'm Ron Popeil. Use your Showtime professional rotisserie to make one chicken or make up to four chickens. Do one leg of lamb or do two legs of lamb. Not just one honey ham, but two sweet tasting honey hams. And look at this mouth-watering turkey. Do one roast beef or do two eight-pound roast beefs. There's never been anything like it. One juicy pork loin roast or two juicy pork loin roast, one orange flavored duckling or two orange flavored ducklings. You can do up to eight healthy thick salmon steaks with your standard Showtime rotisserie basket, as well as 15 thick juicy hamburgers. With your included standard nonstick basket, you could do garlic and oregano shrimp, frozen onion rings or frozen fish sticks. And don't forget about the optional giant lobster and vegetable basket. You can do lobster tails, as well as those extra thick delicious pork chops. If you love ribs, you'll want to purchase my optional newly developed round rib basket, with rib hooks included. It's guaranteed so anybody can put on ribs easily. At one end of the slab of ribs, just lock one hook behind the last rib bone. Do the same at the other end. In placing the ribs on the round rib basket, which is positioned in the rest area, place one hook on any horizontal rod, then rotate the round basket until you can attach the other hook on tightly. Repeat this procedure for the remaining slabs of ribs. And don't forget to use my famous barbecue seasoning and barbecue sauce. They're just out of this world you got to try them. And don't forget about the optional self-turning kebab rods to do your chicken, lamb, beef, or fish kebabs. You can remove the glass door by lifting the left side up and pulling out. The right side will just pop out. In repositioning the glass door back in the machine, slip the right hinge pin in first then allow the left side hinge pin to pop in and lock. Your glass door is now ready to close, or you can slide it under your machine and get it out of the way. The reflector drops in behind the heating element. Make sure it's resting above the top heating element on the ledge. Some models are designed with a heat reflector, and some are designed without a heat reflector. In the end, the result is the same. It's just based upon the design of your machine. If your model comes with a metal heat reflector, please put it in place before using the machine, as Ron showed you. And you can take it out occasionally and wash it. Then you can just slide your two-piece drip tray as far back as it'll go. Then you can place your spit rod assembly in the rest area, then slide it back into the A or B position. Note, smaller Showtime models have only one cooking position. A. This is a three and a quarter pound chicken. Because it's a small chicken, you could place it in the B position, and it will cook faster. Larger foods and chickens over three and a half pounds should always be placed in the A position. When the chicken is in the A position, it's only 15 minutes per pound. If it's in the B position, it's slightly less. 
Of course, if you're doing more than one chicken in the A position, it will be less than 15 minutes per pound. See the included booklet with your rotisserie for correct cooking times. Lift up the window, just set it and forget it. Please don't take set it and forget it literally. It's only valid if you have read and followed all the instructional material. When using your Showtime rotisserie, it's important to check from time to time on how your food is progressing. Don't take set it and forget it literally. Notice that we have half hour increments going around the unit. It's a three hour timer and it turns off automatically. Now you'll notice down the bottom here, it's in the normal rotation. That's right in the middle. That's the heat on and the rotisserie is spinning. If I move it to pause to sear, that allows the heat to stay on, but the rotisserie is not working. It sears all your foods. Of course, if you move it over to no heat rotation, your food is done already, and you turn it to no heat rotation for just five minutes on the timer. That's when the heat is off, but the rotation continues. That'll allow you to let your food rest with all the juices permeating, marinating inside and outside. We'll go back to the normal position. If you own the Platinum Edition with digital controls, it simply works like this. Now we have the hour button right here. I'm gonna to touch it and we have one hour and you can see the digital light right there and it will start in just a couple of seconds time. Above it is the minute button and I will give that a press a couple times and you can add on your minutes. The left side is minus minutes and we can take away minutes if we so desire. And of course, we have the off button down over here. That turns it off. Although your machine stops automatically when you're using it. If I wanted to just touch the button again, you will notice that the rotisserie spins a little bit each time I touch it. So you can position anything in there anywhere you want. Now the function button on the top allows you to do the normal rotation. That's heat with the rotation. Of course, I'm going to go to no heat rotation over here, and I'm going to give it uh, a couple of minutes on no heat rotation. Now, what is no heat rotation? No heat rotation is what it says. There's no heat, but the rotisserie is spinning around. Now, the reason I invented that was that I know that when food is done, not everyone is ready to sit down at the table. And so this will keep your food spinning around with the juices flowing, and it'll keep it hot for about a half an hour's time. You never can get those people to sit down at the table when you want them to. And the last button on the side over here is pause to sear. And I'm gonna to touch the function button again. And what'll happen here now is the rotisserie stops, but the heat remains on. It will allow you to sear your food, especially when you're doing steaks and lamb chops in the basket. I'll turn it off and that's all there is to it. If your Showtime machine came with a jog dial timer, unless you have selected another function, the timer automatically goes to normal rotation. You can adjust the cooking time by turning the jog dial up or down. The warming feature automatically sets one hour of warming when you push the warm button. You can increase or decrease the warming time by turning the jog dial just after you select the warming button. You can set the warm selection while your food is cooking too. Now I'd like to show you how to tie a chicken using two ties. One tie is already in place. The other, I'll just shorten a bit by tying a knot, cutting the excess off, and then you just slip it over the wings and you're done. To tie a chicken with one tie, turn the chicken over breast down. Slip the tie around the wings, give the tie a twist, then flip the chicken over and lock down both of the legs. Flip it over again and now lock down the wings. You can sprinkle a little char rubber seasoning for extra flavor. Now you're ready for the insertion of the spit rods. Put the lid on, put it in the machine, slide it back, 
bring up the window. When using two or more large pieces of food, the spit rots have a tendency to flare out. This problem is solved with the Showtime Alignment Spring. As you can see, it brings the rods back to a perfect vertical position. Now this is very important. Don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the left. And don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the right. It's very important that your large meats and poultry be centered on the spit rods so the food does not touch the red hot heating element while it's rotating. Now you can easily add more food. It's that simple. To make sure meats and poultry are cooked the way you want, check always with a meat and poultry thermometer. Here I'm sprinkling one of my favorite rosemary seasonings on all sides of these two large pork loin roasts. After placing the spit rods on the spit rod platform, I'll center the pork loin roast, then slide it down. And then I'll do it again with the second pork loin roast. I'll put the lid on Put it in the machine, slide it back, bring up the window, then set it and forget it. Here I'm squeezing a tuna steak in the included nonstick basket. The food is locked down tightly by pushing straight down on the lid. On the included gray platform, set your spit rods in a vertical position. Then just thread the rods through the loops that are on each side of the basket. It's that easy. Put it in the machine, slide it back, and then you just set it and forget it. This is the nonstick regular basket that comes with your professional Showtime rotisserie. And this is the optional giant nonstick lobster and vegetable basket. And you can see the difference. If you have a deep basket, now you can do giant turkey legs. You can do big turkey breasts, lobster tails, even super thick hamburgers, chops, and super extra super thick steaks. After filling the basket, just take your lid and press down firmly so that none of the food moves around. And now you're ready to thread the nonstick giant lobster basket with the spit rods. You put the lid on and it's ready for the machine. If you have a full size showtime or a compact size showtime, here's how the lid goes on your basket. Stick it in one side and it's very important that the fish does not move around on the inside. Problem, sometimes the edges of food get burned in the baskets as they go around. Solution? Cut small strips of aluminum foil, fold them in half, and cover the leading edges of the basket. As you see here, you can line both of the top and bottom edge with foil, and this will help keep the food from getting burned as it goes around. Here we're loading chicken wings covered with Ron's barbecue spice. And it's a good idea to load food so the smaller bones go toward the middle of the basket so they have less opportunity to fall out the edges. Looks like this is going to hold about 10 chicken wings. Now when you put the basket on, you have to puncture the foil with the end of the basket. You see, you push it down and then snap the top into place through the foil. Now, here's how to make kebabs. Now this is the turning mechanism here. The purpose of the turning mechanism is to turn it a quarter of a turn each and every time. That way all four sides get done. The turning mechanism must go on the right side. And we're gonna slip it in on the left side like this, back it into the right side, slide it up, put it back, put up the window, set it and forget it. The same procedure applies when using the optional self-turning kebab rods with the new professional model Showtime Rotisserie. We're gonna show you how each one of those turns by itself. You can see that as we're doing it right over here. 
the turning mechanism is on the right side. You see it do a quarter of a turn? And here's another one doing another quarter of a turn. All four sides get done that way. Keep the meat and vegetables on the kebab rods no more than an inch and a half in diameter so they don't touch each other as they go around. This is how you use the Showtime liquid flavor injector with the new stainless steel needle. Suck up that juice. And I'll take this and I'll jam it in. Just a little shot there. Stick a little shot over in here. Put a little shot down in here. A little shot in there. Use it all up. Huh? Then I'll just go to the spit rod over here, slide this in, and all I do is go down and just ram it through like this. I'll set it on the counter over here like that. I'll put the uh, fine thing on over here, snap it down, and lift it, set it in, position it, slide it back. And here's my new invention, the Showtime Solid Flavor Injector. Here's how it works. You can put whole cloves of garlic in the center of a roast beef or a pork loin roast. You can put dried cranberries, black olives, sun-dried tomatoes, all your fresh herbs, your cilantro, you can inject way into the center of foods now. And all you do is this. You push it in, you slide the food in, it pops right out, okay? And now, here's how you tie a turkey. For turkeys, the Pro model holds up to a 23-pound turkey, the full-size model up to a 15-pound turkey, and the compact or junior model up to a 10-pound turkey. The turkey is tied down over here. It's tied down on the largest part of the leg here, mm -hmm. and I've also tied it over here. The part I'm going to tie now is this part right over here. It should be tied in four places, one, two, three, four. Here I have a six foot uh, piece of cord and I'm going to just slide it under the bird. And this is the spot I'm going for right over here. I'll just match it up and do a double tie like this. Okay, tie it really super tight and I'll just flip it over. Pull it tight and one, two, three, and then tie it down like that. It should hold all by itself, and, and then all you'll do is just trim it. Okay, I'll flip the bird back over again. Let me smooth out the skin here so it's nice and nice, okay? Now this is very important. Don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the left. And don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the right. It's very important that your large meats and poultry be centered on the spit rods so the food does not touch the red hot heating element while it's rotating. And now we're ready to take the spit rods and insert them into the center of the turkey, but only for a few inches. Then place the turkey with the spit rods onto your included platform and slide down the rest of the turkey. You snap on the lid, put it into your rotisserie. But please don't stuff the turkey because it'll take twice as long to cook. I'm going to slip my glove on over here. And uh, I want you to know, though, you can use any kind of gloves that you may have in your house. And by the way, these gloves are, in fact, rubberized. Watch what I do here. I'm going to turn off my machine over here, and I'm going to slide this right under. The first thing I'm going to do is lift up and just take it out. It's as simple as that. Now, over here, I have my meat thermometer. You must check to see if, in fact, the meat is done. It's done. Good. I'll take the meat thermometer out and just slide it off. The chicken comes right off and you are now ready to serve your chicken. Problem, your chicken is done for time and temperature. 
However, the breast of the chicken is not as brown as you'd like it. The chicken has probably been loaded a bit off-center. So, stop it when the breast is aligned in front of the heating element and set the function switch to pause to sear. Set the timer for five minutes and you'll find the chicken breast is nicely brown. Now here I have a piece of, beautiful piece of roast beef and I'm gonna just uh, sprinkle some nice stuff on here all over. Get some nice good spices on there. That's gonna be lovely, huh? Pretty? I think so. Okay, now, since I have it like that, I'm going to take the spit rod over here and do not go in over here in the meat. That's beautiful meat. You don't want to do that. What you basically want to do, folks, is go in through this way. And so I'm just going to slide it through like so, and I'll just push it right through like that. Now, this is very important. Don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the left. And don't put your food on the spit rods too far to the right. It's very important that your large meats and poultry be centered on the spit rods so the food does not touch the red hot heating element while it's rotating. I'll set it on the wheel like so. I'll put this on over here. It'll match up. I'll put it in the rest area. Slide it in the middle, push it in the back. Here we have a standing rib roast. It's been in for well over a couple hours now, and it's just running smoothly. It's very important that, as you see, the bones on the left be on the left side and not on the right side, so they could possibly hit the gear, which causes everything uh, here to work. This is important. If you see or smell smoke, it's because the food in the rotisserie is hitting the red hot heating element. If this happens, turn the machine off by turning the dial or by pulling the plug. Don't use water on or in the rotisserie. Keep the door closed and let it cool down. Then trim or retie your food tightly. And be sure that the food is centered on the spit rod so it always rotates without touching the heating element. If you hear a squeak as the machine goes around, put a drop or two of vegetable oil or olive oil on the gear wheel nub before inserting the spit rod assembly into the machine. Or use the end of a kebab rod dipped in oil and drop it onto the nub like this as the machine turns. Or you can even use a straw. But be careful if you do it when the machine is turning. These parts get very hot. Discoloration. Some discoloration over time is to be expected when you work with hot food. It's normal and it will not affect the function of the machine. On white machines, it gets slightly browner on the front of the machine behind the glass door. This is caused mostly by fat from roast beef. You can line the bottom of your drip tray with a small sheet of aluminum foil. Be sure it's flat against the bottom to leave room for fat that drips off the food. You can't have any fat or grease build up on the grate cover, so please don't cover that with aluminum foil. It's made to drain the fat away down into the drip tray. On top of the unit, you can have the optional heating tray. When you open the top to check on your food, be sure to tip the tray lid so any moisture falls back onto the food. Here we have some beautiful beans and succotash. That'll be sensational. And by the way, as you can see, you can just put it on the top here. It stays on the top and comes out beautiful. There's a tie latch on the side. Use one of the elastic food ties, tie a knot about one inch down, and slip it on the arrow-shaped piece here on the side and then over the door handle. It helps hold the door in place when storing or moving it. But remember, always let the machine cool down before moving it. And now here are some cautions, things to avoid when using your rotisserie and barbecue. Do not touch the glass on the top or the bottom. It's hot. When the glass is underneath, do not touch this. This is very, very hot. Don't touch the top, 
Don't touch the back. Always very hot. Never use spray. Never use spray inside the machine. Don't touch this. This is very, very hot, okay? Never grab that. You'll burn yourself. Never touch the sides over here. This is important. Remember, always keep at least eight inches of space from any cabinet on the top, sides, and back. This is no. You're too close on this side, and you're too close up here. This is no. Hot. 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 Do not touch. Important. Keep out of the reach of children at all times. Don't let them reach up and touch it. Important. Do not put charcoals or any foreign objects in the machine. Important. Do not move rotisserie when it's hot or loaded with food. There are several optional accessories for your Showtime rotisserie and barbecue. Shown here is the giant lobster and vegetable basket Use it for a variety of very large foods. And then we have the round rib basket designed solely to do ribs, flank steaks, and briskets of beef. For the best ribs you've ever had in your life, you got to order my round rib basket as well as my famous barbecue seasoning and barbecue sauce. I've also developed the greatest rubs for meat, poultry, and seafood. They're called char rubs because they give you that outdoor charcoal flavor on all your foods. We have the citrus for seafood, the original for hamburgers and steaks, and the barbecue char rub for all your poultry and pork. These are my personal favorites. You're guaranteed to love them, so order them now. Of course, if you like chicken, beef, or seafood kebabs, you'll want to order the optional self-turning kebab rods for your Showtime rotisserie. Your Showtime rotisserie holds eight of them. If you like kebabs, then call and order them now. You can also order the meat and poultry thermometer as well as a large package of additional elastic chicken ties. The Showtime flavor injector is used to inject great flavor marinades into your meat and poultry. The five marinades I've developed are tangy teriyaki, hickory smoked pineapple, southern honey lime, and New England seafood urban spice. And of course, my favorite, charcoal roasted garlic. With these marinades, your foods come out with great, unique tasting flavors. All you do is mix them with your favorite juice, water, or wine. I do recommend trying my five great flavor marinades, and I know you'll love them. I've just invented the first solid flavor injector for home use. You can put whole cloves of garlic in the center of a roast beef or a pork loin roast. You might want to consider ordering the Showtime rotisserie stand. It comes with the custom waterproof cover. To order any of the accessory or items shown in this video, Call the telephone number listed on the screen. Remember, all our merchandise is sold with a 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Thanks for buying my products, and thanks for taking the time to watch this video.